So this afternoon, uh, for this session, I want to move on to focusing on uh, the jitta. Uh, this morning's exercise, we attempted to examine the uh, fluctuating objects of consciousness. The other aspect of the mind is the the knowing quality, the subjective aspect, which in Abhidhamma is called the citta. And it's a term that's used quite often in the Thai forest tradition. Um, in the Thai form is jit, which uh, in colloquial Thai language also means heart. So you may see in books um, translations of uh, Ajahn's talks from, from Thailand, you might see heart hyphen mind, heart mind. That's translating the word jit, which is the uh, essential knowing, the quality of having an experience. It's uh, a, a uh, aspect of mind that is absolutely central to our experience, it is our experience, defines our experience, uh, and it, it's uh, difficult to grasp because it's so immediate and so direct and so simple. It's just as it is in each moment, it simply knows, it has that one function. So it's said uh, it can either be purified or defiled. All the objects of consciousness are known to it, but they don't affect it. The citta is just simply a process of knowing, of experiencing. <clears throat> uh, There is a, um, a difficulty also in that the citta being, by definition, quintessentially subjective, you can't really make it an object of consciousness. You can't really observe the citta as such. It would be like um, uh, seeing your own eyeballs. You can't do that. You can look in the mirror and see a reflection of them, but that's not that's not the eyes themselves. That's merely a reflection of them. So if you attempt to look at the citta, you're only looking at an idea of the citta or a reflection of the citta. <clears throat> Uh, some years ago, I attended a, um, a lecture given by a, uh, a Tibetan Rinpoche, and one of the things he mentioned in his talk, uh, he was giving some instruction, and he, he said uh, uh, to try and observe the uh, knowing mind, the consciousness. And I didn't think, at the time, I didn't think... Um, it was appropriate for me as a Theravada monk to challenge you know, the question in public. It would sound, you know, it would look bad. It wouldn't be, it would be very nice. But I waited till after, and uh, when I spoke to him privately, I said, you suggested people look at the knowing mind. Uh, do you think that's even possible? And uh, he kind of hemmed and hawed and beat around the bush for a minute or two, then he, he came to the conclusion, actually, no, it's not. <laughs> but, but, it, but it's a very good exercise to try. <laughs> I think that's true. Uh, but I prefer to be a little bit more direct, so I don't say try to observe the knowing mind, but try to center yourself in the knowing mind. Try to center your experience in, in, the, in the knowing quality. What we ordinarily do is 
uh, in the course of our daily life, we get caught up in our, uh, this is how we make a lot of suffering for ourselves, we get caught up in our mental formations. You get caught in your thoughts your and emotions um, and identify with them so that you, you feel like you're, you're identified with those thoughts, like I am the thoughts or I am the emotions. Uh, and it's essentially being off-center, off-kilter. Think of the, uh, the chitta as the still point in the, in the center of experience. And all the uh, chitasakas, the thoughts and emotions, sensations and so forth, are whirling around it like so much debris in orbit around the planet. Yeah. And if we're at the still point at the center, it's calm and peaceful, and we can observe clearly everything that's going on in the periphery. From the periphery, we're caught, we're in motion, and we have a, a skewed perspective. We're not seeing the totality, we're, we're seeing things from a wrong angle. So we're having a, a, a bad perspective on, on our own interior states and we feel out of control. And we, we, and we end up being buffeted around and, and it inevitably results in suffering. But if you're centered in the knowing, you can deal with anything. You can observe the various states coming and going. And you can operate from a position of clarity, uh, peacefulness, spaciousness, and equanimity. This is uh, the position that leads to wisdom. So it's a little bit more uh, difficult to speak and talk about specific instructions for a meditation like this. And this is one of the frustrations many uh, newcomers have when they go to many Westerners who come to uh, uh, Thai forest monasteries. If they've come, like myself, I came from, uh, um, my previous experience had been in the Mahasi Sayadaw tradition. And uh, those traditions give you very specific meditation instructions and one of the things Westerners often complain about they go to uh, Thai monasteries is, they, is the difficulty of getting explicit meditation instructions. This all seems very vague. We have plenty of explicit instructions on Vinaya and uh, monastic <laughs> etiquette. That's, that's taught in great detail, but uh, meditation is not... Uh, uh, although we, we do a lot of it in the Thai monasteries, it's not um, so much explicitly taught as a technique, and people will meditate in different manners. But when uh, you get in deeper into it, you understand the essence of the teaching there is to find this point of just knowing. which is really, when you get down to it, it's the same as just being. <clears throat> the perfect meditation is doing nothing. You know, doing nothing at all, just sitting there. And in Zen tradition, they, they, they do talk about that. They talk about, about uh, a Shinkaze, just sitting. So you just sit there. So another, another uh, talk I went to once was by a Zen teacher who <coughs> spoke for over an hour, and it uh, it was entirely on sitting posture. He was going into very great detail about how you cross your legs and how you hold your hands and 
the correct angle of your head. And I kept waiting and waiting for him to talk about what you're supposed to do with the meditation. And <laughs> <laughs> he never did get, get to anything other than sitting posture, which I realized that is the meditation. <laughs> 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 This uh, uh, idea of meditation as just being, as, um, of not doing anything. Uh, there's a, a story, in, a Tibetan story, about um, Milarepa. Many of you will have heard of Milarepa, the great yogi of uh, Tibet, who is a lot, in his stories, there's a, often a, quite an element of, uh, and a playfulness. And... Uh, says he was wandering one day uh, and he came across a, a group of people working on some kind of construction. They were building a shed or a barn or something and they were quarreling and it was working, you know, just, just disputing with each other and everyone was in a bad mood. And he was up on a little, little uh, hill looking down at them and uh, then he decided, well, this is a good place to do some lying down meditation. Mm -hmm. And he'd lie on his back on the on this hill. And then one of the workmen looked up and said, look at that yogi beggar. He's sleeping in the middle of the day. In, in half an hour, he'll be down here begging for alms. Why don't you come down here and do some work and earn your, your lunch for a change? He said, oh, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that, he said. Uh, but I'm... I'm I'm far, far too busy doing nothing, and that's taking, <laughs> that's taking everything I've got. I couldn't manage it if I actually tried to do something as well. <laughs> also, so in the same vein, I saw a Buddhist, um, uh, I forget if it was a bumper, I think it was a bumper sticker. I don't, uh, don't just do something. Sit there. <laughs> this is the you know the, the, this is surprisingly difficult to do nothing. Now that's why uh, we give you minimalist exercises to like watch the breath. Because you're trying to approach the approach the position of doing nothing. You know? So for trying to center yourself in the chitta, which uh, We'll try and do this afternoon as far as we can, sitting and walking. Um, you begin with with uh, with breathing. Uh, center yourself. Make get yourself quiet and peaceful, and uh, just try and remain centered in the knowing, and let whatever happens in the mind happen. But don't go out to anything. Remain watchful. And remain centered in that clear knowing. This, uh, so, uh, You're not knowing anything. You're just knowing. Uh, yeah, just just pure knowing, so that you're actually you're knowing whatever arises. And just centered and letting the phenomena come and go as before. But the subtle difference is instead of focusing on the objects, you're trying to remain centered in, at the center in the quality of knowing, so that uh, things are observed as if on a, on a screen, <coughs> and you're not getting involved in anything, you're not going out to anything, you're not being moved from that center position. Try not to let yourself get upset by anything or fascinated by anything, you just... Uh, remain in a state of uh, receptive, wide awake, passive observation. And every time you feel yourself go off center, just bring it back. Just center yourself in the knowing mind. And, uh, let that be the vantage point. And, uh, do that, you know, sit for as long as it's comfortable, and then get up and do the same thing walking. Be aware of the whole body walking and just try and observe it from a vantage point of knowing.
this, uh, as I say, this meditation is a little difficult to describe, but um, uh, you'll find if you can find that space, you'll find it very peaceful and uh, uh, pleasant, calm, abiding. And if uh, emotional states arise, whether they're pleasant or unpleasant, just let them be, just observe them from the, the, the point of knowing is not affected. You can be uh, frightened or happy or angry or worried or ecstatically joyful, but uh, those are just transient objective phenomena. The, the knowing knows those things, but it's not itself. It's not itself frightened or happy or sad or angry or anything. It merely knows those as states. So, we'll, uh, we'll do that now for the next um, couple of hours till uh, What's the, the break time is 4.30 when we end yeah. this? Yeah. So it's it's just gone 1.30 now, so we'll be doing this for uh, the next um, three hours and uh, alternating sitting and walking.